What's up, YouTube? On today's show, we're going to break down the top tight ends. We're going to talk about some sleeper picks, how we handle the position in general. Make sure you subscribe, click that bell so you don't miss a show. We're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we, Jason? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah! Well, I've got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot and managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. If you like a show with big laughs, a lot of heart, this is the one for you. Look, it's Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's good end, enough. End of read. Uh, watch Ted Lasso now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. This is Jerry McKinnon, running back, San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, welcoming you into Monday, August 17th. The beginning of another week. Mm. I think it's 24 days until kickoff. Oh, really? <sighs> Jarek McKinnon keeping it real chill to start the show. <laughs> Look, your boy's strong. Your boy's strong. Maybe. <laughs> we'll find <laughs> out. We're excited to have you with us. We have a, uh, a tight end rankings episode for you some big announcements some big news to talk about a very important actionable quick question in my opinion that could help your fantasy team and no it's exciting to be talking football it's exciting to see we are fully in uh, just unmatchable hype train season oh I, man i'm I telling you right yeah. now this it's is the worst <laughs> What? This well, is no, the no, no. Best. Let, let me let me rephrase. This is going to be the worst hype season because the conjecture it, it's like a game of telephone now. We don't have preseason <laughs> games. We don't have as much media. We don't have people attending camp that are third parties to watch with the eyeballs. We've got coach speak extraordinaire. We've got yeah. limited padded practices. We've got uh, I mean, I've seen some news reports, and I'm not going to put any specific organizations on blast, though very tempted to. But these reports are like, you know, this player is expected to be considered to be expected to be very good. That's a news report. Yeah, look, that's our job to say stuff like that. Yeah, I mean... You've been doing that about Blake Jarwin for months. Speaking of, Blake Jarwin's season is upon See, us. I hope we're all are ready. Yeah, we're, <laughs> you're ready. Uh, here's the reality, and it's it, you're right, Andy. It's compounded this year, but the the journalists, if we can call them that. Oh, uh, come no, on. Th they still Take need it to, easy. They need to write their articles. But here's the thing. The consumer, and I consider myself a consumer in all ways. <laughs> <laughs> needs those articles like right, I'm, right. i am thirsty for yeah you don't really need, i'm you don't I want love, them to stop they're just i want to hear about the expecting the hoping to expect a good year like i'm i'm in on that now i will not allow allow it to affect my fantasy rankings and we will have to see through it but i still want to see it what about that uh aj dylan picture is that affecting your rankings of course not but it's affecting my heart which uh, yeah. affects your rankings yeah essentially workout videos pictures from camp i you know aj dylan looking especially special yes. yeah i don't even here it is i do like i mean the reactions to that picture of aj dylan's calves and quads and tree trunk legs it, it was immediate like fear in the hearts of aaron jones uh drafters look last year immediate last year uh there was fear in the hearts of Tyler Lockett owners when all the DK Metcalf pictures were coming out about like, oh my goodness, uh, that that's impressive. He's an impressive athlete. He was guess like, why guess why he was drafted. I like that's because your example. An and now DK Metcalf is in fact being drafted in front of Tyler Lockett. But he shouldn't be, and he didn't outperform Lockett last year. <laughs> well, Lock Andre just, Williams of the Giants used to look. Like AJ, oh yeah, AJ Villain did. So I wouldn't be too worried. The, like Jason said, 
These are uh, professional athletes. They should. When you take a picture of them, they should look better than us. <laughs> That's true. But barely. <laughs> just barely. <laughs> but it, it is very exciting to be in full hype season. We'll try to wade through the coach speak for you. Some coaches are more prone to, you know, a rosy outlook for each and every one of their players. But you can get ready for your draft right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. I encourage mm-hmm. you to go check it out. Get in there. Get your rankings going. Get yourself set up. Our drafts, uh, I think our big ones are basically right before the season starts. Yeah, you, mo- most, of, most of our big drafts are right before the season starts, that weekend leading up to September 10th, that, that weekend of uh, glory, the, the <laughs> holiday weekend as well. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be another big Big draft going on mm. the weekend before <laughs> the big <Alabama! laughs> Uh The Megala Bowl is here. Jason is uh, hashtag hype. Jacked up. <laughs> That's with the, uh, the inverse three. Jacked. Jacked. <laughs> All right. The Megala Bowl is here. You can get in right now. Year number two for the Megala Bowl. This is the largest fantasy football league on earth. I think it's three. Yeah. No, this Mike is, is year correct. three. <laughs> this is the last year was when it really uh, yeah. it went to the moon, though. Mm-hmm. And we had more than 7,000 playing last year. Uh, this is your chance to be declared the Megala Bowl champion. This is your chance to win a 2021 listener league spot. It's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. So listener league entries, they've been awesome. We are grateful. I'm, I, I think tomorrow we will probably be sending out our, our winners uh, and the announcements for the listener league entry, but it's all right because if you didn't get in, this is your way in. Someone in this year's draft won last year's Megalobolt. They are in the listener league this year. And look, this is just – these are fun leagues. These are our listeners – who love fantasy football, who are having fun playing in our preferred scoring format. It's a lot of fun, and you want to prove that you're good at fantasy football, take down the Megalobowl. Mm. Yeah, it's a tournament-style Super League built to allow the Foot Clan to compete thousands upon thousands. It's very exciting. People have been waiting for the link to get in, and you can only do that as a member of the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com. So if you go to jointhefoot.com, you can get your free entry to the Megla Bowl. Very, very excited. Brooks is so excited. You could hear it in his voice. Isn't oh, that right? yeah. That was true. Ex- I mean, that, that might be the longest awe he's ever given. That was that was great. Been storing that up just yeah, for this moment. Was, Mike's eyes went big. He, he will now hibernate until next <laughs> Megla Bowl announcement. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so head over, jointhefoot.com, get in the Megla Bowl right now. And uh, you'll get to pick your uh, preferred drafting time, and that will determine what league you're in. And you can see all the rules, all the regulations, everything. Um, You can go to jointhefoot.com and check it out. Quick question of the day. Brooks has titled this Team Nosedives. What fantasy offense, what fantasy team do you think will take the biggest nosedive in 2020? So... uh, this doesn't necessarily correlate to, you know, an NFL's high-scoring team that collapses, although most often it does. It's more about, like, the fantasy options on that team going from a bunch of relevant players to maybe fewer in 2020. What do you guys think? Uh, for me, it's the Los Angeles Chargers, and I, I feel a little bad because I, I think it's easy pickings when you take a team who loses – uh, you know, a, a borderline Hall of Fame quarterback that they know and who knows the system, who's been there for 50 years, and you go to, you know, a, a perennial backup and or rookie, probably both this season at quarterback, but you have a lot of important fantasy pieces. You have Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry and Mike Williams and Austin Eckler, these really valuable pieces from the last several seasons, and I think overall... The offense is going to take a nosedive. They they all are still just as talented as they were last year. But if the team, which I think, and and, and here's the thing. If, if you're a Chargers fan, if you're one of those two or three out there and you're listening, um, you don't have to be sad because I think your team's going to be better this year 
from an NFL standpoint. Your defense looks good. I think you're going to try to do less on offense. But so, but that's the problem for fantasy. If you're trying to do less on offense, um, you know, slow the game down, play good defense, um, protect your rookie quarterback, things like that. The the touchdowns aren't going to be as high. The yardage will be lowered. It just won't be glorious for all these players. I'm going to throw a San Francisco out there, which might surprise some people. Mm -hmm. um, look, nobody ever – when things go very well for a team, they make the Super Bowl run. We saw this with the Rams a couple of years ago. Nothing could ever go wrong. Sean McVay is a genius. Kyle Shanahan's a genius. Everything is perfect always and, ever, and forever because you don't see the future. You see the present. San Francisco made a tremendous jump last year. They went from 21 points a game to almost 30. That was number two overall in football. It's just hard for machines to stay machines in the NFL. Certain seasons, they, they just go right. And uh, your backbone of this team is not Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson when it comes to year-to-year -year offensive uh, prowess. You lost Debo Samuel, Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, you lost Debo for maybe yeah, a couple be games. Back. Uh, everything went right for them last year, and uh, we saw what uh, an offensive line could do all of a sudden in Los Angeles, moving them from a top-scoring team down into, I believe they dropped to 11 or 12 last year. And I, when I look at San Francisco, now that you have you do have Jarek McKinnon in the backfield with Tevin Coleman. Yeah, he, he look, he's Mostert. back, apparently. He, he, he claims to be. And then you, you lost Debo, so you got Brandon Ayuk, but you got Trent Taylor, you got Trent Taylor back. And you got you know Kendrick Bourne. Look, the only player that you might even... We got Trent Taylor back. Yeah, he's the starting slot receiver for the team. My point is is when the team uh, moves the football, who who are you playing in San Francisco this year? Are you going to Kittle. get... Kittle. You're, you're playing George Kittle. End of list. For me. Jimmy Garoppolo? In a, in a super flex, I'd play Jimmy so G. So when, when the foundation of your team is Jimmy G and he's been a little bit up and down, I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. I think he's done exactly... He's done the golf. He did the. He's done the exact golf role in the San Francisco offense, which is to execute, mm -hmm. not to take over a game. I think it could. Uh, you could see that downgrade for the 49er fantasy options. I'm going to throw out the Houston Texans. Uh, when you lose a Hall of Fame wide receiver, that really hurts things. But just on top of that, what what is the identity now of this team? Like, I still like Watson. I still think that he could be a, a solid fantasy quarterback. But yeah, David Johnson, what is what's left in the tank? He maybe he is a value. That's the the story of the Houston Texans uh, skill players is maybe they're a value. All of them. All oh, of them. oh, David Johnson, maybe he's a value. Oh man, Will, Will Fuller? Fuller, maybe oh, he's maybe. An, he might be an incredible value. Brandon Cooks, man. Oh, dude, he could be a huge he, value. This he year. is maybe a huge value in this draft. Like. Look, yeah. if you want to go deep, you know, Duke Johnson. Oh, man. This is the year. Yeah. This is the year that he maybe. might be He might be a value. And look, sure, maybe they are values, but but there's a reason they're going where they go, They are going in fantasy drafts. And when you're talking about I mean, last year coming into the season, Houston Texans, you're, you're thinking of a prop bet of, well, they might score the most points in the NFL. They are an elite offense to now, I have no idea. What to think about this offense? I'm in. <laughs> uh, like all jokes aside, I actually i I'm gonna believe in Deshaun Watson in the in the. So who, who's the the Brand, value then? Brandon Cooks. To oh, me is the, maybe is the maybe undervalued. maybe. <laughs> Let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, Washington football team activated Alex Smith from the uh, from the active PUP list. Unbelievable. Uh, look, throwing this out there for dynasty owners, he's on dynasty waivers. I got him in both of uh, our main dynasty leagues, and it didn't cost me anything. Free to pick up. I had a player I could move to my IR. Just check check your league and see if you can pick him up because he could win that job. All right, on Johnson was spotted in a knee brace at training camp. <laughs> oh. 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 That's, that's a true. nice pivot. We have a new. That is a nice. We pivot. have a new carry on drop. Nothing really matters. <laughs> yeah, you are right. Well, and then they uh, they signed running back Jonathan Williams. Oh, oh I remember, remember him. Remember that week? That, I, that was awesome. It probably says something about that carry on recovery. He was that exciting Buffalo Bill backup, right? Oh, you're that forgetting turned into the Colts. a Colt superstar. Yeah, I mean, for everywhere. what two weeks? 
Yeah, a week or two, something like A week like or that. two, and he looked good. But carry on Johnson, hurt again. And the team has really not come out, and it'd be nice if, if that happened and the team came out and said DeAndre Swift is like our future, he's going to be our guy. But they've pretty much, you know, Swift came out a month ago, said, I've been guaranteed nothing. The team says still to be determined. Right now, I would consider DeAndre Swift the third down back. Really? Yeah, because mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's going to go beyond that. I don't know if they're going to do a shared um, – uh, Bo Scarborough is going to be involved in the offense, whether carry on's back. Swift is third downs for right now is the way I'm looking at Oof. it. But. At least he's talented. Yeah, yeah, Swift is the best running back on the team. So if, you, if you're going, you know, the cream rises, Yeah, then – I'm still fine. I'm still okay taking a shot on Swift. Uh, Adam Gaze said Denzel Mims injured hamstring, no timetable to return. They also lost Vincent Smith, so they went out and signed uh, Chris Hogan. Mediocre signing of the week. Oh, Chris Hogan. Do you think he still has his my guy medal up in oh. in his room? Oh, the mighty have fallen. Uh, but basically. The Jets have let, – let's transition to hype here. One, Jamison Crowder is standing out as by far the best wide receiver in camp. That we knew we that. Knew that. Yeah. yeah, we but saw the depth chart. We <laughs> thought maybe Denzel Mims would you know, do something, but he's hurt. And Chris Herndon. Chris Herndon, uh, big expectations from Adam Gaze. Oh, we're back. He's come out and said he's our starting tight end. We're back. Chris Herndon on the field is extremely fantasy relevant to me. Uh, I've been very excited about him coming back. He's probably going to be on more of my teams than any other tight end because he's not being drafted or he's being drafted very late, and he could be the number one or number two target on the team. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's exciting about him. If you punt the position, he's completely free. Like I like Jonu Smith a lot this year. He's a guy that I think could break out. But when I compare him to Chris Herndon, who I could get after my draft off of waivers or just pick with my last pick if I wanted – he could legitimately become the you know one B as far as target in this offense, which is exciting upside. I know that we would not normally prescribe like two tight ends on your team, but I don't have a problem. Let's say you have your last two picks and you went Herndon Jarwin to see who breaks out week one. Sure. I mean, do do you want to do that or do you want to pay half your fab in week one for the the tight end that breaks out trying to grab the next Kittle Andrews, whatever the case may be? Yeah, if, if there's nobody really appealing at running back or wide receiver in your last round, uh, I, I, I see that point. Mike's lips curled upwards at the thought of someone else drafting Blake Jarwin right there. Mm, it's not happening. <laughs> he was actually well, no, you were I just mean, talking to I just to meant Mike. like in other leagues. Oh, no, it, look, it's happening. Well, you, you mentioned, you know, do you want to have to spend half of your fab on the next George Kittle? And I'm like, no, just draft Blake Jarwin. <laughs> if he's not a my guy oh, this man. week. Our My Guy episode oh, that's a big is Thursday. Hoo-ha! That's a big deal. Listen in. Tell let's, your friends. Let's see if Blake makes the list. Kyle Shanahan said, I don't know. said first round rookie running back Brandon Ayuk is further ahead than a lot of rookies. Did you call him a running back? Did I, I hear you? Did I, did I? I don't know. Wide receiver. Brooks? Brooks? Whatever. Did I Brooks say isn't listening. Back? I right. told you he's in hibernation. He's oh done. My gosh. He's spent. How do you feel about the Megalobowl, Brooks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a recording. We, he just played back his recording. He can't. He doesn't have the energy to he's put that out inhaling. fresh. Um, what, what, he's a wide receiver, Mike. Yeah. And uh, further ahead than a lot of rookies. It matters a little bit to me coming from Kyle Shanahan specifically, who's been traditionally very hard on all of his wide receivers. <clears throat> Dante <clears throat> Say the, the, the guy who put Pettis in a body bag? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, he also said that Debo has a chance of being available week one against Arizona. He's not counting on it, but has a chance. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to take the not counting on it part. Yeah. Debo is still your highest ranked wide receiver for the 49ers. I assume he is for yeah. me. Yes. Okay. And then help me wade through this. Brian Edwards, third round rookie wide receiver from Las Vegas, getting first team reps ahead of Henry Ruggs. A lot of the you know conjecture and hype, Derek Carr coming out, oh, he's like Devontae Adams. You can give him the 50-50 ball. Athletic freak, first team reps, but uh, a lot of their first team wasn't getting an opportunity in practice. Aguilar, Zay Jones, Devontae Booker were starters here. Um, what do you think about Brian Edwards? Is he sneaky? Is he? Does he enter the conversation for you 
like Rager, Judy, Lamb, late round Jefferson, late round rookie wide receivers? I'll, I'll I'll speak first because I know Mike is a little bit more hot and bothered. I am not in on any Las Vegas receiver. Um, the the cost for Darren Waller, who I love, who is great, he is the Walrus. We'll talk about him today. It's difficult because they added so they added Nelson Aguilar, they added Henry Ruggs, they added Brian Edwards. These guys are all good. It's still Derek Carr throwing the ball. They are still rookies. I just feel like you know they're if they're all kind of really good and they're going to bring this offense to the next step, but they're all eating into each other's targets and opportunities, and it's still Derek Carr. I just don't know what the ceiling is for those guys in redraft. In you know, obviously in dynasty, those those prospects look uh, really really promising. I will say Brian Edwards, he would have been a a much higher draft pick, but he got hurt during the draft process, and it, we see this happen all the time. That someone, if they're hurt in that process, they just fall in the draft. It's what happens if you're not Hollywood Marquise Brown, and then you're still a first round pick. Uh, he's he is an excellent excellent wide receiver. Uh, I really like him, and look. Would you draft I, him over Henry Ruggs? I like taking shots at Derek Carr whenever I can, but Derek Carr did sustain Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper once upon a time. Now, Darren Waller changes things a lot if he's going to be the number one target, but we've seen wide receivers be perfectly fine, in fact, very good for fantasy purposes while Derek Carr is the quarterback of the team. I'm still taking Rager and Jerry Judy over Brian Edwards. But what about Ruggs specifically? Are you taking Ruggs or Edwards? I, I think that's the bigger question if you're going to spend, sure. spend on the chance. I'm still I'm still going to take Ruggs. I'm going to take the guy they took in the first early in the first round okay. uh, over Brian Edwards. And, who's who's one of the fastest yes. guys in the NFL. And we I I shared this uh th this weekend but if you haven't watched him play basketball. Oh yeah, my I saw him goodness. jump over a skyscraper. <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's fun to watch this 5'11 guy just dunk it on is. fools. Yeah. It's not fair. It isn't fair and He's it's so not fair that I didn't get that body because I love <laughs> basketball and yeah. I would love to do that just once. Just once in my life. Is that what you'd say to him if you walked out? It's unfair that I didn't get your body. Yes, that's that's what I plan to say <laughs> if I meet Henry Ruggs. Oh, dude, sweet body. Can I? Ha sweet I wish I had body. that. Can I have it? Sweet body. Look, bro, oh, your body. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty, whoa, you're athletic. Um, all right. On a, on a, as he dunks on you. On a bigger, better, brighter <laughs> note, as yes. he dunks all over it's me. tight end time. Uh, look, Foot Clan, you got to check out Underdog Fantasy. We've been talking about it the last couple of weeks. Underdog Fantasy, mm -hmm. yep, they are up in our studio. They are on our phones. Download the app. If you're playing best ball, if you want to get prepared for your drafts and win money at the same time and have fun, it's Underdog Fantasy. Everybody's always been like, "What? What? where do we go now that draft is gone? Underdog Fantasy is the answer. Their UI is awesome. Uh, it's it's the cleanest, easiest, quickest way. Yeah, everybody to I've, I've talked to that played draft likes Underdog even better. Yes. Oh, and and I'm I'm one of them. I think that it's it's really fun. It's really quick. They show you a lot of things about your portfolio, players you have. It's fantastic. And and the nice thing is you don't have to worry about making the right start sit decision. You can do as many of these drafts as you want in this time of the year and it's not going to get in the way once you're in season about oh now I got to make all these transactions. It does it for you. You get the best score. Sign up for Underdog today and enter the Best Ball Mania for a chance at 1 million dollars in prizes by going to underdogfantasy.com or searching for Underdog Fantasy in your app store. We also want to thank Simply Safe today. Here's the thing about home security companies. Most of them trap you in high prices or tricky contracts crappy customer support. It's not good. There's not a lot of good options out there, but there is one no-brainer and that is Simply Safe. Uh look, we've used Simply Safe here in the studio for going on almost 5 years now before they were ever a sponsor. That's what we chose because of the difference uh, that we saw in Simply Safe. They've got everything you need to protect your home, none of the drawbacks that I mentioned earlier. They have professional monitoring that keeps watch day and night, ready to send the police, fire or medical. Even if Jason, uh, you know, he comes in here, he forgets to disable their alarm, they'll come apprehend Jason. That's what they're willing to do. Uh, there's no contract, no pushy sales guys, no hidden fees, no fine print. Starts at $15 a month. Uh, we think Simply Safe is great. And you can try it today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping and a 60 day risk free trial. Nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.
Tight ends. All right. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this episode to Matt Nagy. <laughs> he loves him some tight ends. Uh, dubbed the tight end collector by Kyle the Borgogan. Or maybe that was Brooks. I'm not sure. Um, let's talk about tight end strategy for a second before we get into our top 10 tight ends on today's episode. We've been doing these rankings breakdowns over the last week. We've This is our kind of final episode of those. But uh, one of the things that is very tempting as a fantasy football player, and I am I will admit I'm tempted by it even as a player of you know 15 years of playing fantasy football, when you're in the middle of a draft and you see your roster on the right side of the screen and you start to fill in spots and it looks so beautiful, wonderful. Do I want to really get this guy who's going to go on my bench? Yeah. That, I've, I still haven't started my tight end yet, you know? And He's, so we're tempted to grab that tight end no matter what, just fill that starting roster. Don't do it. No. I mean, here's the reality. Those top end tight ends, and, and we all know who there are. There's two tiers. Two tiers of two guys. You got the Kittle Kelsey, great. Grab them. They are going to be fantastic. They're going to help your team. And you've got the the tier two, the Mark Andrews, Zach Ertz. We'll get to those guys. But if you miss out on one of them, there are plenty of other tight ends out there who are better, more assured of production, and will be higher ranked in our rankings than the later round guys. But the gap is the Grand Canyon when you're talking about from the top tier tight ends to the streaming options. And if even if you get one of those next tier guys, you're wasting out on a running back or wide receiver pick that is important in that fifth, sixth, seventh round. Um, you know, to me, it's pretty simple. I I look for value on one of those top four guys to drop. If I can grab them, great. If not, I am literally taking it with my last positional pick because there are a handful of guys that will be there that even if my projections, my own projections say, well, I've got them finishing a little bit behind some other guys ahead of them. They, they have big opportunity to win a job. They have the skill, the talent and, and you know, every, every year there's a breakup. Mark Andrews last year was a big breakout pick. Jared cook the year prior was a big, these were, Last round picks mm -hmm. or, or or at least Darren Waller digit. last year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to linger very long on our top. You know, as we go through the top ten, I want to make sure we have some time to talk about those breakout candidates. So I'm going to include the big boys together to start this off. Number one, Travis Kelsey. Number two, George Kittle. Both got contracts this off season. Both have been absolutely dominant fantasy forces. I was just asked why I have George Kittle ranked ahead of Travis Kelsey in a dynasty league. Someone felt like that was disrespectful. I'll tell you why. He's four years younger. And I think both of these guys are absolutely, you know, dominant. But last year, points per game, they were the same. Both been paid. And uh, Kelsey, I believe, is 30. Kittle's 26. But we have Kelsey in a redraft at number one. Yeah, uh, we, uh, Mike and I have Kelsey in our shared mm -hmm. dynasty league. If we could trade him for George Kittle, we would do that yep. in a heartbeat. Uh, because you're adding four years, and they're both great players. But in redraft leagues... These two guys are dominant. They are the number one target for their teams. There are not many tight ends out there who are pretty much clearly the number one target. Uh, they are physically able to make fools of people, uh, which is both fun to watch and also <laughs> good for fantasy points. There's not much to say here other than consistency and known, you know, yeah. they, they are known commodities. Travis Kelsey last year was the tight end one, which is pretty good the year before he was the tight end one three years ago he was the tight end one yeah and what about four? the year before that he was the tight end one so i think there's you know what you're getting the back the reason Kit, uh, kelsey's ahead of kittle is the the quarterback i mean you have patrick mahomes um they throw the football andy reed's offense guaranteed targets guaranteed production um that's the difference maker for me between the two but i won't be surprised if kittle ends up number one yeah, and, and so where do you draft them? You draft them when they fall in the second round. Yeah, second round, I'm fine. Okay. Right now, their average draft position is the eighth pick of the second round for Kelsey, uh, the very last pick of the second round for Kittle. I would love to get one of these guys at the turn. If I, you know, if you start with Christian McCaffrey, and then you can come back. And yeah, then, that'd be pretty great. And that next round, get a running back that dropped and pair him with Kittle or, or uh, Kelsey, fantastic. Okay. Mark Andrews at number three and Zach Ertz at number four. Mark Andrews last year, 64 receptions. So uh, a huge, you know, step down from the, the big two. 
reception wise, but he had 10 touchdowns. He had 98 targets. If you watch Baltimore, you could see that rapport between Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews from the get go last year. Lamar loves throwing the football to his big tight end. And Andrews, he struggled uh, with a little bit of injury last year, uh, playing hurt in a couple of games, missed one game overall. I think that was just week 17. That was though. sitting, yeah. Um, so, But he, he had a couple games where people were a little worried about his availability going into them. But, you know, he had the most deep targets among all tight ends. He had 20. That's as many as Tyreek Hill down the field. Lamar Jackson extending plays and finding Mark Andrews. You love big pl big play opportunities with Mark Andrews. That's the difference maker between you and your opponent. Now, the, the question for Mark Andrews is you, where you're drafting him, you know, at the back of the fourth round. Can Mark Andrews make the jump this year that he is now considered? Now we have a big three. It's Kittle, Kelsey, and Mark Andrews. And so Jason is the resident Mark Andrews truther. Do you believe that them trading away Hayden Hurst will lead to actual more snaps because what is pretty shocking about Mark Andrews here, 98 targets. I mean, that's still incredible volume for a tight end, but he's doing that on under 50% of the Baltimore Ravens snaps. Put the dude on the field. What are you doing? Yeah, we, uh, I, ironically, last year we called for the uh, Mark Andrews breakout. Loved but what was what was really funny is part of the narrative of his breakout is that he wasn't on the field enough, and just imagine if they put him on, they didn't need to, uh, and he that's still because fifty percent of their snaps were uh, kicking the extra point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, no, I I don't think he's going to be able to jump up to the uh, to the tier one, and the reason why is because this is still a lower passing volume offense. Similar, you know, you would you would say the same thing about San Francisco, mm -hmm. but the difference there is he is the clear number one target especially coming into this season where Debo is injured and there's a rookie in Ayuk but I expect Hollywood Brown to take a step forward this year and I think that it'll flip-flop as far as who's the number one and number two target in the offense still love Mark Andrews would be happy to have him but I think it's an interesting conversation when you talk about Andrews's ceiling is higher than Zach Ertz but I feel like yes. Zach Ertz's floor is higher than Mark Andrews if the touchdown regression that we we see for uh, Lamar Jackson comes true. So I perf I'm starting to rise on Zach Ertz. I started this offseason kind of oh just down, but the reality is Alshon is still banged up. Uh we don't know if he'll start the year on the pup and Every year, Zach Ertz outperforms where you're drafting him, and we always give excuses. Oh, these receivers were injured, or if you look at this game stretch, it's because of this, but is every year. And now, coming into this season, I feel like he's still the number one target for this offense. Well, Greg Ward is starting in practices right now. It is happening. Yeah, so Zach Ertz. Wh which guy do you prefer in your draft right now, based on where they are going, where they're being drafted. Would you rather take the the upside, the young gun in Mark Andrews, who is going ahead, um, currently the tight end three being drafted at the back of the fourth round, or Zach Ertz, the tight end four being drafted uh, in the middle of the fifth round? I, I'm a Mark Andrews fan. Mark Andrews. I for think me. you know, 98 targets on 41 percent of snaps is insane. That I is. mean, 98 targets was like nine fewer than Greg, uh, than George Kittle got last year. He goes to the – Lamar Jackson goes to the huddle, looks around, and goes, oh, Andrews is here. Break. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do think it, – it's for a couple of reasons. One is I want smash games. I mean, the, the old Gronkowski type of games where I, where I can get Mark Andrews scoring two times and just obliterating my opponent. And I think he'll have a, a better floor than he did last year just coming into uh, this third year with, with Lamar and the opportunity there. So – I like the upside. I think, let me, let me ask you this, because we had an article on the website. Uh, Mark Andrews, can he be the tight end one in 2020? Do you believe Mark Andrews could be the tight end one? Yes, I do believe that. I believe that's a possibility. Yeah, people could get injured ahead of him. <laughs> I mean, I, he has the talent and uh, a, a quarterback. So yeah, he could, but I would put an extremely small percentage. All right, and then Zach Ertz, you guys talked about it. The, the wide receiving core right now in Philadelphia is Greg Ward. Jalen Rager and Deshaun Jackson. That is correct. And Mike is. Uh, I I trying to read through the tone of voice, but your confidence level in Greg Ward seems to be lower Oof. than what you were hinting at. Look, I came into the off season very low on Greg Ward. Yes, yes. 
I remain very I lo- very low. I don't think um, that's fair to the man. <laughs> but he's nothing special. He's just uh you know, he's he's a third wide receiver for an NFL team. Let me let me see if I can get through the weeds here again. Your defense of him in- implies he may be a my guy on Thursday. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean stay tuned. <laughs> All in. <laughs> stay tuned because and and you know, look, he's a junior. So Greg Ward Jr. he could it, this is the Greg Ward show right this is where this podcast yes. what do you mean he's a junior <laughs> how is that relevant i this is what i know about greg ward oh okay <laughs> all right all right and trivia knowledge i think uh some <laughs> eagles fans will be sad that we didn't get the greg ward he respect. did step up when he was called upon yeah. and showed flashes he plays wide receiver and he plays wide receiver so zach Ertz. um we have another tight end we're going to talk about number five Darren Waller, he's at four on Mike's list, five on Jason, six on mine. Last year finished the tight end number three, 117 targets. Unlike Mark Andrews, on the field 91% of the time. And this was a breakout campaign for Darren Waller. Mm -hmm. Uh, We we didn't have quite the target share over the back half of the year as we did in in the beginning, but... To Jason's point at the top of the show, talking about Brian Edwards, it's a little murky in the wide receiver court, even still. Yes, you spent draft picks on a couple of rookies, but we don't know which one's going to be on the field when. Tyrell, the press around Tyrell Williams is very negative right now. Mm. Um, Fell off over the back half of the year. May not even be. I mean, look, Brian Edwards could be starting. It could be Ruggs. Renfro can get in there. Waller still seems to be the most... It's almost like the Zach Ertz in Philadelphia situation. Yeah, very, very much. It, you saw Darren Waller coming in with just under 24% of the targets, which is an insane number for the tight end position. And you have – what's crazy is Waller should have been better. Yeah. He, he had a, over 1,100 yards, and since the year 2000, there's only been nine times a player has hit that mark of 1,100 yards and scored three or fewer touchdowns. Nine times. And Darren Waller is in that. And eight el- of them were Julio Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, three or fewer touchdowns on 1,100 yards is impossible. But the question. I mean, it happened. The but- question is, is he going to come near to that 1,100-yard mark this season? Last year you right. had – Tyrell Williams get injured. You had Hunt, uh, uh, Hunter Renfro he does, not yeah. involved in the beginning, and then he got injured a little bit. Uh, you know, I I completely see the argument that, look, this is a young core of Brian Edwards, Ruggs, Aguilar. Like, it's a mishmash hodgepodge. They're still going to need Darren Waller. But I also think that they don't want 28% of their yardage coming from their tight end. That's just – I mean, he was by far the most in the league at – percentage of teams yards uh, at the tight end position and I just don't think that's how they want to run right I I, I don't know I don't know but I I, I like on, Waller based on their transactions based on the fact that they have put a lot of money and capital into the wide receiver position that's where I would say I don't think they want to I mean they say the offense runs through tight ends and and that and that's fine but I think they they need explosive plays from the wide receiver position. And we saw in the middle of the year when Hunter Renfro started getting more and more involved, there was a corollary dip with uh, the Walrus. I think following the transactions just says the that the tight end cannot be the only reliable weapon yeah, you need on the this ability team. to go elsewhere when, I, when you can't, when, when you have Waller doubled up. Now, He's, the biggest question to me in the draft because he's still he's one of these guys that we were I was just talking about at the beginning of the show once you're past these top four you go man Darren Waller is way better than taking a shot on Jonu Smith yeah he is like that that's true but he costs a fifth round pick where there's quality wide receivers in those rounds that we are that are more known commodities are you willing to draft Darren Waller in you know the the fifth round this season are any of the wide receivers in that round um, a walrus? Uh, none. <laughs> okay. One's, but but one's my answer shark. is actually no. Even the fact that he is the walrus does not overwhelm. I have not taken Darren Waller, I believe. I have not either. Um, it's just right in that middle where I'm taking the shot at the, the wide receiver that I've got on my mm-hmm. breakout list. You know, you'd be choosing Hollywood mm-hmm. or Darren Waller. And 
Yeah, I, I yeah. see what you're saying. Tyler it's kind of- Lockett. Keenan Allen, Devontae Parker. Chark is in there somewhere. Yep, DJ Chark is after him. Metcalf Woods is after him. Do you think it's because it probably won't be better? We we all acknowledge it won't be better than last year for Waller outside of like some spike in touchdowns. So the probability is that the targets come down a little bit. When a player is projected to do a little bit worse than the year before, that's not as exciting of a pick. Last year, you got Waller for free. Got him in the double-digit rounds. He was dart throw and he came through. Free Waller. And, and... It didn't cost you anything. You you weren't giving up a good piece. But here, you're giving up on DJ Chark or Robert Woods to mm-hmm. draft him. I'm not doing that for my roster. All right. We'll put uh, some of these thoughts on late round tight end to the test right here with these next two tight ends on our rankings. Because Jared Cook comes in at number six. Jared Cook is was the number five overall tight end the year prior in Las Vegas before Darren Waller took over. Uh, last year, he ends up at number seven in 14 games in New Orleans. But he did it on 55% of snaps. <laughs> and it was tight end or touchdown dependent. Mm-hmm. That being said, from, you know, he arrives in New Orleans from week five on. Okay. So you give him, you, I'm going to give him four weeks to get acclimated in the offense with Drew Brees because okay, I choose to fair. make that argument right now. <laughs> well, but, and also, Brees was injured. Um, from week five on, and this was with mo- missing two games. He was on pace for 984 yards and 15 touchdowns. So you're betting, like Jared Cook is much more the traditional tight end bet where you're saying he needs to score for me. But it was really, really good for it Jared was. Cook from week five on, including five finishes in the top six and uh, no finish outside the top 14. So he never actually hurt you, despite the fact that some of these games, he had like two receptions for two touchdowns. He got it done. So I don't, you know, I'm fairly confident in this offense, and I'm fairly confident in Jared Cook being a weapon the last two years finishing in the top seven at the position. And he's a 10th round pick. So that that's the point where I started to go, well. I know on the live stream Yesterday, Mike, you said you're out on Jared Cook, and I'm, I'm gonna out. I'm gonna let you tell the Foot Clan why they should be out. Before you do, I'm gonna say why I am in. Um, I realize Emmanuel Sanders is coming in, and he's a low volume, high weekly volatility player, but he is going in the double digit round, so he doesn't cost me a wide receiver or running back. And in that place, he is he has been a known commodity, a, a solid fantasy producer. And if you look at the games, like Andy said, he came, okay, you give him a little pass in those first couple weeks. He's acclimating to a new team, a new system. But also then Drew Brees was injured. By the time Drew Brees came back, Jared Cook was actually missing those games. So week 10 on is when you had Brees with Cook. And at that point on, uh, he was the tight end one. He was ahead of Travis Kelsey, ahead of Tyler Higby. That's so up I'm, there. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the shot. That's what I'm doing in the tenth round. But Mike, you have the floor now. Yeah. What, so what week on was that? Week ten. 10? Week ten. So that was when he came back from injury. They, they had a, eight games. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I will say I am a little bit shocked of the the, the ADP for Jared Cook in the tenth round. Which, so I, I mean, I'm out. I, I'm going to explain that, but. Tenth round is really not too bad, but here is why I am I am out. No other tight end outproduced uh, based on volume than Jared Cook. Or, like you guys were saying, he was 16th in targets, but the tight end seven in fantasy. He had a 14 percent target share in the games that he played. That is a lower target share than T.J. Hawkinson, than Jason Witten, than Jack Doyle. His 16.4 yards per reception, which was clearly the highest last year tight end because since the year 2000 tight ends who had 50 or more targets that's the highest yards per reception jared cook last year that's called out producing that's called a an outlier year an unbelievably high efficiency year it and this is you know uh 16.4 yards per reception he's been 12.7 yards per reception jared cook the last five years so massive outlier in in efficiency it just reminds me so much of the Eric Ebron Colts season where Eric Ebron had 750 yards and 13 touchdowns. Jared Cook, 705 yards, nine touchdowns. Uh, the ADP, like I said, I guess it's not as bad as I two, thought it was two going great, to be. Two great players there, Mike. <laughs> I know. How did it go next year for Eric Ebron? Uh, probably got injured. There's, oh, there's going to be more volatility with Jared Cook's outcomes because of the target totals. 
Yes. And because he's Jared Kuk. Yeah, he's uh, Jared Kuk is the tight end or the, the target four on the team. Right. I mean, obviously, yeah, Michael Kamara. Thomas, Kamara, and Emmanuel Sanders will have more targets than yes. Jared Kuk. So you've got to get those touchdowns or those big plays. But the nice thing is he's also the fourth weapon for the defenses to focus on you know they're they're trying to well, get so that's where the downfield and the touchdowns they can come for you let me let me <laughs> let me ask you this mike as we move on if you ended up with jared cook Kuk. sorry cook uh would you be comfortable starting him for 16 weeks uh because to me that's where this equation becomes interesting is sure uh if i get him in the 11th round and I don't have to think about my tight end position versus taking the shot. Maybe like I talked about the Herndon and Jarwin double stack or Jonu and Jarwin or something. Well, certainly. I mean, if he hits, then yeah, you're playing well, no. him every week. But he, here's the thing with Jared Cook when you're drafting or drafting him. Week one, he goes out and he has a bust game. You're like, ah, that's the Jared it's, Cook. It's by the fine. Way. Jared Cook at week two, he comes out. He hurts your team again. Now, what are you doing? You're. That's what I was asking you. You're, you're, you're not comfortable starting him 16, locking him in for 16. Well, I've, I'm just I'm laying out the scenario of if he hits, if he misses on those first two weeks, it's going to be really hard not to make a waiver move to put him in, and then he can go off on week three. And you're like, oh man, I got to get back on it, and then you're just chasing the dragon over and over, and it becomes versus a just playing the matchups. Because if you draft if you draft uh, Blake Jarwin or Chris Herndon. And they stink week one. You you have no problem just going. Oh, this guy's got a good matchup in week two. I'm going to play him. And it might I will be wonder how many weeks Mike will give Blake Jarwin before sixteen. You're going to give him sixteen. Yeah, Mike Gesicki at seven. Tyler Higby at eight. We've talked a lot about Tyler Higby on the show. Gesicki, his situation is becoming a little bit clearer, just with the fact that it it seems like we have the targets. We're expecting in Miami. We might not have the quarterback we're expecting, but Gesicki is a late round tight end that we all have ranked much higher than ADP. He's being drafted as the tight end 15. And that means he's basically free in your draft. Last year, he ended as the tight end 11, and he didn't really break out until like week nine on. Mm -hmm. um, Devontae Parker, Mike Gesicki, Preston Williams. That's, that's, the offense right now. Yeah, the problem is that during the beginning of last year, that was the offense, and Gasicki wasn't good. But then the offense became Devontae Parker, Mike Gasicki, because Preston Williams went out, and all of a sudden, Mike Gasicki was great. That being said, he was also he's young for a tight end. It takes a couple of years for these guys to break out. He has the athletic profile of Saquon Barkley, as in he's a 100th percentile athlete, just in incredible. I, I never really loved his film. He's not a guy that I've watched play football and been like, that dude's a great football player. Well, apparently he broke zero tackles on 51 receptions, which... See? Like, what was happening? What has happened? How because are you stronger a, than everyone? He's a superhuman that I think he's playing it safe. Like, what if he's actually a superhero and he's like, <laughs> I can't show everything. They should have tackled me here. Do you think that's what's happening? Do you normally rank like your superheroes around eight at the tight end position? Well, when they're not going to show what they've got, yeah, he's he's, he's afraid. Yeah, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get caught. It's, it's Dash in the Incredibles. He's exactly. a bashful hero. Um, <laughs> you, you know, the reality is, I'm not like I. We all have him at eight. Mm -hmm. I think the targets will come. I'm not inspired by Mike Gesicki. I am fine leaving a draft. With You're my not going to write a poem or anything like that? With my No, I don't think so. With my last round pick. And what's ironic is, you know, what the ceiling for him, I, I just, I don't think it's as, like, whose ceiling is higher if they both hit? Herndon or Gasicki? Genuinely, I'm I think, curious. I think it's probably Herndon. I mean, but let's use the Blake Jarwin-o-meter. Uh, Gasicki, Mike, is basically free. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've, you've drafted Jarwin at late, late, late in drafts. Are you, you're, you're taking Gasicki ahead of him? I if he's right, sitting there? Right now, I am not. Okay. I, will, I will take Jarwin over Gasicki. So you think the upside of Jarwin's higher than Gasicki's as, as well as yes, for, Herndon, too? Uh, yeah, because of touchdowns. Okay. So you get when you get down into this part of the tight end rankings, yeah, you start to... Pick the guy you like. <laughs> yes, yeah. Fooklin, that is, that is the, the takeaway here. Once you are to this range, do not get fooled by the rankings. This guy's four spots higher. These guys are all in this gigantic group of could-bes. 
Take a look at the outlook you think, I want a piece of this offense or I want a piece of this talented well, let, athlete or whatever whatever matters to you and pick that guy because the ranking doesn't matter at this point. So let's talk about Tyler Kudby. Tyler Kudby is sitting here at eight. End of the year on fire. Mike, are you w passing on Higby in the eighth round because of that price for those guys that you mentioned earlier? Uh, I mean, it, the Higby... So Tyler Higby, Evan Ingram, Blake Jarwin, that it it is a difficult decision when I'm in drafts and it's it's a it's a one by one case. I do believe in all three of those players. I believe in Tyler Higby, uh the transition of the offense where everything started to run through Higby. I'm I'm not expecting it to turn into that all season long, or I would have Tyler Higby ranked as a as a top three tight end. I mean but when he was given the opportunity, he was able to do things that very little tight ends in history have been able to do. Like he was since 2000, he's the fourth like tight miniature end. Miniature tight ends. <laughs> he yeah. is the fourth tight end to rattle off four straight 100 yard games ever. Like that doesn't happen. And I know you can say, well, the schedule lined up. Okay, great. Everything lined up. It certainly has lined up for other players before, and they didn't rip off four straight games of 100 yards at the tight end position. The player has the ability. They, they've they just never asked him to do it, and they did, and he came through, and the team was much better. The offense was much better, so I do believe in Higby. If you want to hear my case against Tyler Higby, go listen to the Fire and Ice episode. Hint, he was my ice player in that one. Mike has him the highest. And you can see all of our tight end rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, and in the Ultimate Draft Kit, you'll see the projections that we have. For in, each in the player. Ultimate Draft Kit, you also get the blurb right up, so it'll give you a little bit more context because the ranking matters less for these tight ends than kind of the the outlook. Now, Evan Ingram comes in at number nine, but Jason, it's I your, cannot it, believe it's your, your it's your fault. It's your fault because you have him significantly lower. Mike and I are both have him at seven. Uh, you have him way lower. Tell us briefly why you're out on Evan Ingram this season. Uh, look, Evan Ingram, when he's been on the field, has produced. He's been a quality uh, fantasy option. I'm not out to the point where I wouldn't want him on one of my teams, but my projections assume he's going to do what he's always done, which is not be out on the field. He has been more of an injury risk than almost anybody. He's never really played a full season. And, and if you look into the details and the context of when he's had big games, when it's ironic because when he's been healthy, a lot of his teammates have not. He's he's he was the guy when you know Odell Beckham was gone for a stretch of games, or when Saquon was gone, or you know it's it's one of those things where I I think when you have the three wide receivers that nobody knows who, how to rank them, you know you've got Shepard, you got Tate, you've got Darius Slayton, you got Saquon and Evan Ingram. If everybody's healthy on the field, I don't think Evan Ingram is going to be the star he's been when he's been healthy and that's if he's healthy so I I just have a more pessimistic outlook he's obviously a talented player who on a per game basis while playing has been pretty productive so if you if he drops to a good value um I I, I don't hate taking him and just hoping for health but right now he's in the seventh round and in the seventh round I'm not willing to to go in personally all right uh Hunter Henry comes in at 10 which feels like somehow the worst spot to land in a set of tight end rankings because it just feels very ho-hum. Like, if you got the number 10 tight end every week, you are losing at the position. Yes. So outside of the top 10, by way of our projections, Jason's kind of favorite guy looks like Jonah Smith because he has him at seven. Um, mine is, is Chris Herndon. Mm-hmm who uh, I have at 11, so I have him inside that top 12. And Mike's is Blake Jarwin, who he has at tight end number nine. Um, those are the shots that I think we're taking outside of the traditional rankings to give you a breakout candidate at tight end if you're punting the position, which a lot of people do at quarterback and tight end, to, to load up on those multiple positions, wide receivers and running backs. Those are our shots. I think Hayden Hurst I, I was is just gonna very make sure, interesting. I was going to make sure you brought up that name because Hurst is one of these guys where he's you know he's not the sexiest pick because he hasn't done it yet, but he has an opportunity here, massive opportunity on you know to fill in for Austin Hooper, just 
to to all you got to do is find the soft spot in the zone. Matt Ryan will get you the ball, and he loves throwing to the tight end position, and they have more vacated targets than anybody. Yeah, so I I I love taking a shot on Hayden Hurst, Jonu Smith, uh, Chris Hearn, and Blake Jarwin. Those those four guys. Rob Gronkowski is not in our top ten. Some people will be find that interesting. I just yeah. It's Gronk is very very tough. One, he took a year off of football, so he's in a system that uh, that saw OJ Howard just Thanos into non-existence, and now there's reports that all three tight ends for Tampa Bay are going to see playing time. Uh, it, so it's it's you're, very you're, tough. You're just paying for a name. The last all time you're we saw him, paying for a name. 800 yards, four touchdown Gron pace. Gronkowski it wasn't impressive. will go to the Hall of Fame, but it won't be based on his 2020 season. He's, you know, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans are the clear leaders for mm -hmm. this passing game, and it's been years since we've seen Gronk. I'm, I'm not in. He'll get in the end zone several times, I'm sure, through the course of the season, but I don't want to. I don't want to play that game. All right tomorrow's episode of the show we're hitting oh. the top 10 tips and tricks for fantasy football very excited about that episode it's always a uh, a fun one each and every year like i said we got my guys this week on thursday things are ramping Oof. up gentlemen it's a big week lots of big announcements as well so make sure you're listening to the shows this week i'm i'm super excited for my <laughs> top 10 yeah and so make sure you go to jointhefoot.com yeah. so that you can enter the megalobowl um every year it's it's a highlight it's, it's a lot of fun mega, i mean listen mega, mega you get exposed to that kind of content in the megalobowl that's that's quickly. the stuff <laughs> and uh before we close out today's episode i want to thank pristine auction a reminder it is fantasy week at pristineauction.com through thursday it is an auction dedicated to active fantasy football stars. Darren Waller signed jersey yesterday, signed for $72. The Walleris. We don't, we don't have a Waller jersey, do we? I think we do. Do we? Brooks? We have a Waller Brooks, somewhere. Brooks, wake up. We have one that you wore for uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Halloween. Yeah. yeah, all right. All right. Because yeah, you remember you dressed up like a Walleris. I did. <laughs> remember that? But you can uh, uh, yeah. get in on this fantasy football memorabilia auction. This is a perfect time to kind of. I like to use memorabilia in two ways. One, I like to display it in kind of like my office or mm -hmm. the, obviously we use them here uh, at the studio. The other way is to taunt my opponents and my draft is coming up. So I might pick up a piece of gear from somebody that ruined Jason's life or Mike's life last year during the season. Bidding starts at $20, no reserves. Use our code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. That is it. Tight ends in the rear view mirror. Yep, as they should be. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Goodbye, everybody. I'm out of here. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget about Simply Safe. They've got everything you need to protect your home and none of the drawbacks of traditional home security. You can uh, set it up yourself in under an hour. No technician required, and there's no contract, no pushy sales, guys, no hidden fees, no fine print. All starts at $15 a month. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. There is nothing to lose.